Last week we bought an Intel i7 11700K at retail, and we've been testing it for the last week or so. It's technically not out yet, sort of. It's out in Europe and in some other retailers, and that's how we were able to get one as a full retail sample with a box and everything. So this was a full retail purchase, which means that it's not under any NDAs, it's not blocked by any coverage embargoes, because Intel did not provide this. And we've been working on building a new set of test data for the reviews. But we wanted to get ahead of one specific type of testing, because from a review that was published early in the last week, there was some discussion online about whether Intel's new Gear 1 or Gear 2 modes, which are modes made available for memory, and are somewhat analogous to what AMD Ryzen does with its one-to-one -one or one-to-two modes, whether those impact the performance results to a degree that actually matters. So that's what we're testing today. We are testing the gear modes for memory, gear one and gear two on the Intel i7-11700K. And we can do it because we bought the retail one. Before that, this video is brought to you by Corsair and their 5000D Airflow. The Corsair 5000D Airflow is an ATX tower with high material build quality and a focus on cooling performance, with attention paid to small details. The case has a unique look with deeply indented cooling pathways on the sides of the front and top panels and has carefully matched colors across the case, available in both white and black. Learn more at the link in the description below. So first of all, our thanks to Hardware31 on Facebook. Hardware31 is a case modder and case painter, and we worked with him in order to purchase the 11700K at a French retail outlet. It was available publicly for anyone to buy, and we were able to, to work with Hardware 31. You should check him out on Facebook if you want to see some of his work to pick up the CPU uh, and start testing it. So for the testing today, we are not going to show full comparative results versus AMD's stack or Intel's former CPUs, except for the 10700K, which is important for this specific story. And the reason the 10700K is important here is because in some of the early testing, the 11700K looked like it was sometimes worse than the 10700K in specific applications. And from the Reddit posts, this was postulated to be largely due to gear one or gear two testing. There is another reason that we're not showing all the results though, and that's because we're still running the full test suite and working towards a full review, but also, there have been some small updates, like a microcode update and things of that nature that we'll be using and applying before we do the final review. So today's data is strictly meant to be a comparative between AB, A being gear one or two, B being the other one, and a 10700K for good measure. As for Z590, as a reminder, the Z590 motherboards have been out for a while now. A lot of them were announced in January and they were allowed to ship as soon as they could get them out the door. Some motherboard manufacturers chose to wait until the 11 series CPUs become available later in March or early April, but a lot of them did start shipping. Gigabyte and Asus among those that started shipping. You could buy a Z590 board over the last month or so if you wanted to and put a 10 series CPU in it. Or in our case, you, you buy one and you put an 11 series CPU in it because we were able to get the 11 series CPU. So we're using a Z590 board and uh, that is also not under any kind of NDA or embargo because it's available publicly basically everywhere at this point. It's not even just restricted regions. So as we get into the testing, we need to explain a little bit more of the story behind Gear 1, Gear 2, and why this is all interesting. Pre-release information about the new Intel Gear BIOS option has been mainly based on two sources. First, there's a leaked slide from Intel with footnotes describing default behavior. And second, a picture posted on the ChipHell forums of an MSI BIOS screen describing what the gears are. Z590 motherboards have been publicly available for a little while now. A lot of them were announced in January and they were allowed to launch anytime between January and when the 11700 or 11900K CPUs launched. So they're out there and you can get boards and look at the BIOS now if you want to. Board BIOS isn't covered under any NDAs at this point for any of the boards that we're working with. The leaked Intel slide states the following. Quote, i9-11900K, or KF SKUs, are DDR4-3200 Gear 1. All other SKUs are DDR4-3200 Gear 2. DDR4-2933 is Gear 1. End quote. The MSI BIOS has an option labeled CPU IMC to DRAM clock, and it has options for auto, 1 to 1, Gear 1, and 1 half to 1, or Gear 2. Based on this, Reddit members deduced that Intel had introduced an option analogous to AMD's U-Clock to M-Clock, or IMC to memory clock ratio. 
with a major side effect being that, in theory, the default performance may be worse with 3200 MHz memory than with slower kits. We've covered this before with Ryzen, but the true clock speed of double data rate RAM is half the number of data transfers. DDR4-3200 has a clock speed of 1600 MHz, and DDR4-2933 has a clock speed of 1466 MHz. According to the early info that we just referenced, that means that the default behavior of our 11700K is to run 2933 memory with a 1 to 1 IMC clock of 1466 MHz, and to run 3200 memory with a 1 to 2 IMC clock of 800 MHz. This default behavior isn't technically worse than previous generations, because there was no default behavior for running DDR4-3200 in previous generations. This is the first Intel CPU generation where Intel on desktop has officially supported DDR4-3200 memory. The 10900K supports up to DDR4-2933, and the 9900K supports up to DDR4-2666. And running memory faster than that, as most of you do, is technically considered overclocking on these platforms. These limits are so universally broken with KSQ processors that many users may not even be aware of them. And we've made the choice to run all of our CPU tests with the same four stick kit of 3200 MHz DDR4 memory whenever possible. Another valid choice for testing is to strictly adhere to the Intel spec and use the default gear two setting for the 11700K. This can create an interesting scenario where by obeying all of Intel's own guidelines, the last gen 10700K paired with DDR4-2933 memory may actually outperform the 11700K paired with DDR4-3200 memory in some instances. Some community members speculated that this was the approach that Anantac took for their 11700K review. But Ian Cutters has since stated that 100% of Anantac's testing was done with Gear 1. Despite this, the media outlet saw performance regressions versus Comet Lake in multiple games for reasons unrelated to the IMC ratio. And we'll explore those further in our full review. We've done our 11 series testing using a Gigabyte Z590 Aorus Master, which includes a toggle in the top level of the main menu in BIOS for setting Gear 1 or Gear 2. It doesn't expose what the auto setting is. But we suspect that some board manufacturers will choose to automatically apply Gear 1 when XMP is applied. Intel itself may choose to alter the default behavior as well. The CPU is not technically out yet. So enough explainer, we'll come back to more of this after the benchmarks. Let's get into some gaming and then production benchmarks to see what Gear 1 versus Gear 2 really means in practice. We'll start with Rainbow Six Siege at 1080p. We saw a difference here. The 11700K did about 455 FPS average, 318 FPS 1% lows, and 283 0.1% when tested with Gear 1. Using Intel's Gear 2 mode, which is the default on this and most current Z590 boards, the CPU fell to 445 FPS average, which means that Gear 1 gives us a 2.2% advantage. That's not much, but it's not bad, and it's not error. Low scaled proportionally, it's not enough of a change to meaningfully affect the experience, but it's enough to maybe change the hierarchy in a heavily populated chart. More notably, it was enough to get the 11700K more distant from the 10700K, perhaps reducing some of the meh factor that the 11700K shows when tested with Gear 2. Although the, the reduction of meh is not that high. We also saw a relatively wide gap in GTA 5. Despite being older, this one is still useful for times like this. At 1080p, the 11700K in Gear 1 did 140fps average, with lows at 103 and 89 for 1% and 0.1%, representing overall consistent frame times. The 11700K with its default Gear 2 dropped to 132fps average, establishing a somewhat noteworthy 6% advantage for Gear 1 over Gear 2. That's enough to create more of a gap against the 10700K now at 11% instead of 4.8% advantage on the 11700K, and it's not error. This is a real gap that is consistently provable. We also see this change materialize at 1440p, because we're not bound at these settings yet. Nearly identical numbers hit the chart, and so we still see an advantage for Gear 1 over Gear 2, and for the 11700K over the 10700K in this test. Cyberpunk 2077 is up next, tested at 1080p medium. In this one, the 11700K with Gear 2 was technically worse than the 10700K by a little bit more than error. The 11700K ends up roughly equating or slightly passing the 10700K when Gear 1 is used, and the end result is an uptick of about 1.4% with Gear 1 instead of Gear 2. Not as much of a change. 
Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the more challenging ones. The 10700K, as in Anatax testing, sometimes outperforms the 11700K. That happened here. It outdid the 11700K in Gear 2 by 3.8% with Gear 1 bumping us closer to parity between the two, or run-to-run -run variants. We're not quite there, but much closer than we were. Hitman 3 is another one new to our bench. This one has a lot of complications with testing that we may talk about more in a methodology piece later, but the short of it is that we worked through them and established a good procedure for producing reliable data. We haven't run the 10700K through here yet. The 11700K in default Gear 2 ran at 134 FPS average, with lows at 68 and 53 FPS. Gear 1 bumped that by 4.6%, up to 141 FPS average, with lows inside of run-to-run -run variants. In Total War 3 Kingdoms at 1080p, the 11700K did 204 FPS average, 137 FPS for 1% lows, and 120 FPS for 0.1% lows when run with Gear 1. That's an improvement of 2.6% although both entries lead the 10700K here. In F1 2020 at 1080p, the 11700K with Gear 2 originally underperformed at 290 FPS average, allowing the 10700K stock CPU a lead of 2.2%. Switching to Gear 1 wasn't particularly exciting, but it did establish the more traditional scaling we'd expect generationally and moved to 304 FPS average or a 2.4% lead over the 10700K, a complete reversal. Time to move on to some production and enterprise tests. These likely won't see as much of a change, so we'll burn through them quickly just for validation. Blender's up first. We moved to version 2.92, and we're just using our internal GN logo render for a heavy workload. In this one, the 11700K with Gear 2 completed the render in 16.6 minutes, which is more or less within error of the 16.5 minute time of Gear 1. The 10700K required 19.2 minutes, so it was worse than both entries. Chromium Code Compile is up next. This one is most likely to show a difference from our production suite. The 11700K in Gear 2 required 99 minutes to build Chromium, while the Gear 1 test required about 95 to 96 minutes. The 10700K needed 108 minutes, and so was worse in both instances, but Gear 1 is, again, a little bit better. With 7-zip compression, we saw minimal change, but still a change. The 11700K doesn't offer much over the 10700K here, but Gear 1 and Gear 2 also don't matter much. Decompression, also measured in MIPS like the previous test, posted the same type of results. Slight scaling, maybe, for Gear 1, but not in a way which means much of anything. The 10700K was left behind in both scenarios. Using Adobe Premiere Pro and Puget Bench, we measured an aggregate score, so higher is better, of 805 with Gear 1 or 798 with Gear 2. The 10700K ran at 744 points. This score is an aggregate number of all the editing task benchmarks, all of which help evaluate the time required or, depending, the FPS output when performing those tasks in Premiere. Gear 1 showed the most uplift in live playback and in the export score. Combining those produced the slight uplift we see overall. The only topic left here, we've covered enough benchmarks to establish what the trends are with the two options. The only topic left is what this means for our testing approach. So methodologically, there's a lot of different things you can do with all CPUs, but especially Intel and especially related to memory. Because historically, Intel's memory, the official support has been far behind what you can get running by just enabling XMP. So uh, we talk about this in our lengthy methodology pieces every year when we publish them, but this gear option we'll, we'll address now. Our plan is to perform testing in gear one. And the only time we will not perform testing is in gear one is if we're intentionally emulating the performance on a lower end motherboard or using a lower end motherboard that might not have the gear one and gear two options available to it. In other words, the boards that don't have a toggle and they just force whatever their default is on you. We've already committed to enabling XMP and CPU testing over the past few years, which in past generations has always meant boosting the IMC clock in sync with the memory clock because there is no option to do otherwise. In addition, Anatex testing across at least three motherboards has revealed that, quote, the actual default operation for a Core i7 running at DDR4-3200 does appear to be the one-to-one -one mode for each of them. Given the negative feedback on what the community has deemed artificial product segmentation, there is a bit of chance that Intel walks back the default behavior at the last minute uh, since they don't seem to have bothered enforcing it anyway. And this is where you can get into some of the MCE debate once again as well, where motherboard manufacturers are given enough freedom by Intel to just apply their own version of different settings. And if there's one thing motherboard manufacturers have taught us historically, is that they'll run it as close to unstable as they can get away with, 
so that their board appears higher than someone else's if for some reason a reviewer makes a chart at some point with board A versus board B. Because ultimately, if the out-of-the-box settings are running yours faster than what's stock, or at least what's perceived to be stock, then you'll end up looking better than the next motherboard manufacturer who follows things like power limits or turbo boost duration, which has been a common issue for Intel. In the past, we've done some testing of lower-end Intel CPUs with capped memory speeds, and we'll keep doing stuff like that. When we do those tests, the lower-end CPUs are likely to be paired with motherboards that don't allow memory overclocking historically, like the 10100 with 2666. Now, our understanding is that the newer non-Z boards are supposed to support better memory overclocking and higher frequencies with well, CPUs, but we need to get the lower end CPUs in hand to see if that applies to all of them, to non-K, uh, in addition to the k SKU CPUs, or what the exact segmentation is that Intel has created. As for the k SKU that we've looked at today, the 11th Gen i7 and i9 CPUs officially support 3200 memory. So DDR4 3200 is on the support list, and it is officially supported in Gear 2 or Gear 1 with 2933, so you step it down. The 11900K, as marked in the leaked slide anyway, does appear to support Gear 1 officially for DDR4-3200. If the same holds true for the i5s and the i3s, we'll prioritize testing them probably at 2933 Gear 1, but we need to get those CPUs in hand again to see what options are even made available to us with those CPUs, what's been blocked or disabled in BIOS or microcode or whatever the case may be. So we'll look at that as we get towards it, but there's the results for Gear 1 and Gear 2. There's a bit of difference for sure, and we're planning to keep testing in Gear 1 uh, because we already have a whole set of rules that we follow uh, for memory with Intel anyway, and with AMD, like enforcing one-to-one -one on AMD, for example. Uh, so we're just going to pick this as our rule and stick to it. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, you can subscribe for more or go to store.gamersaccess.net if you'd like to help us out directly, like by picking up some of our mouse mats or our toolkits, which are in stock and shipping now. Or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus, where we've posted some behind-the-scenes videos and additional uh, Q&A videos lately. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.